innovations in the minds of modern science. The ancients had not seen it so. And as the blood star passes across our wretched sky, its vast crimson eye tearing the pool that sunders the plains, as I, Dr. Victor Bernhardt, raise challenge to our blasphemous obsession with mortality, those fell boundaries will once again be crossed. I must hasten now. Time's cruel auger twists on. The book. I should review what tasks remain me. I glance at the pages, the cruel, twisting runes that once felt otherworldly. So familiar now. Where your authors failed, I will succeed. Let's see. Yes, so close now. I have all I need. The mind, yes. The soul and the spark. Yes, yes. Excellent. The elements are ready. Let us begin, lest the blood star pass and forget this world for another millennia. I have no pressing use for my equipment. The most grotesque of bodily organs, provenance of all the evils of man. What luck that a donor organ so fresh should avail itself to my purposes this very day. My life's work, my beautiful creation, every organ, each vein, each shred of sinew meticulously reconstructed. Beautiful, but not yet complete. I must hurry. I set the organ in the black ooze that pooled at the base of its skull, surrogate for the body's natural fluids. Though your body is not yet complete, my creation, it will suffice. Come, Apophis, your fate awaits. I have much more pressing concerns. I'd forsaken my youth in wretched study of these tomes. All worth it for the prize now before me. In theory, it was simple. Suck the life essence from a dying vassal, convey it to the host. I'd contrived the device in two short months, though working the sulfurous mercury had taken years off my life. Apophis, my companion, you have served dutifully. One last thing I ask you. Essence, in pursuit of perfection. Demon Electricus, spark fire into spent nerve, revive dead and synapse with thine power. Everything is set. I stand at the Nexus, on the very cusp of the greatest accomplishment of man. Let the procedure begin! Heart in throat as the cadaver stirs, veins pulsing visibly through pallid skin, pumping the black vitreous ooze that was my life's work. It's working! Rise! Rise! Its gaze turns toward me, roomy yellow eyes oozing with the black tar. I've done it! At long last! Death recoiled from mortal form! The very boundaries of life and death unmade! I am the creator! I am God! Ha! <laughs> You boffins crack me up! Brought me back, have you? What fun! Ah, uh, indeed.
Allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Victor Bernhardt. Good for you, Bernie. Good for you. I prefer Dr. Name's Coatrack. Argyle Coatrack. Good to know ya. Hey, I like this carcass you stuck me in. It's got a lot of pep. Uh, pep? Yeah. Hey, how's about we go for a good old steak and kidney and some rumpy pumpy, eh? Please, I know you must find this very confusing. Nonsense! You scooped me noodle out me casket, stuck me in this here pile of parts. What science can't do nowadays, eh? Uh, quite. Well, let's see how the world got on without our guile coat rack. How do you feel? Dandy! No ill effects from the reanimation? Nope, good as new. I attempt to lift the heavy door, straining against the rotting oak. Alas, my weeks of solitude have taken a cruel toll. My palsied limbs have not the strength. You should join my Zumba class. My perfect creation, will you lend me your strength? Course, Bernie. I prefer Dr. Bernhardt. Ha! <laughs> and call me Argyle. Could you open that trapdoor? Sure thing, my friend. Corded muscle ripples under decayed skin as my creation throws open the door. Say, uh, Bernie. Bernhardt. Not to complain, but well, with all this trapdoor opening, I couldn't help but notice. I uh, seem to be missing an arm. Yes, I had difficulties sourcing the final parts. Wouldn't normally make a fuss, you know, but well. Fear not, my ungodly creation. Together, we shall find you a hand. A dread claw with which to reach into the rotting minds of men and hold grip the very black and beating heart of reason. Yes, good. I sometimes use that hand when the other one's busy. I've no care to read of the trivialities within. Say, that the latest rag? Let's have a look. The abomination licks its thumb with a black tongue and proceeds to flick through the pages. Ha! There we are! Argyle coat rack! Geez, they really cheaped out on the obituary! Those fuckers! Wait till I waltz in there, flashing this new zombie body! That'll really tick them off! Ha! To think they had me down as suicide! Ha! Twas murder, Bernie! Murder most foul! Oh my! This box must have come for me while I toiled. Likely some apparatus I ordered. I make a feeble attempt to pry open the lid. The infernal thing's nailed shut. Hmm. Don't see any severed arms lying around here. Patience, Argyle. We shall find the parts you need. Don't go plural on me, Bernie. What else am I missing? Only the cardiac organ. Never heard of him. Your heart, Kotrak. The brain donor's heart, uh, your original one, was, well, weak. Weak, ticker? Nonsense. I start every morning with a hearty full English. Nevertheless, while most parts could be sourced from older specimens, you need a fresh heart before sunrise. Well, there's got to be one around here somewhere. Hmm. Want to make a quick 20 quid? Come to the psychology faculty at 2 p.m. Must not have a heart condition. Knowing that lot, they'll electroshock your cobblers. 
nothing for me. There never is. Dr. Koshbaum, head of zoology. They have a zoo here? Ooh, I want to see the giraffes! She is no mere zookeeper, Argyle, but the leading biologist in her field. Those noodle necks get me every time! She is the most intelligent, beautiful woman to air grace the wretched earth. Oh, Bernie, you got a thing for her? Alas. She would not notice a pitiful wretch such as myself. But my creation, all that will change once you are completed. When the world does tremble before my power over mortality, then, then, as I love her, so shall she be compelled by the very forces of nature to love me too. I don't know, Bernie. Sounds a bit rapey to me. What? No, I... Maybe cool it with the compelled by nature angle. Just ask her out. Go on, ask her. Ahem. Good doctor. Oh, hello, Victor. I, I hope you don't think this rather forward, but, uh, Oh, who's your handsome friend? Ah, uh, this is... Argyle Coatrack, Enchanté! Oh, I like this one. And you, my version of loveliness, must be Dr. Cockbomb. It's pronounced Cockbomb, love. The pleasure's mine and all. Cockbomb? Cockbomb. Cock bottom. Cock bottom. Cock bottom. Cock. 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 Bottom. Cock bottom. Cock bottom. Cock bottom. 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 Cock bottom. Cock bottom. Fanny. Big pardon. Fanny cock bottom, love. Call me Fanny. So, yes, um. As I was saying, if you're not doing anything... What's your story then, Mr. Coatrack? Ah, this young gent done stuck me brain box in a new carcass. Oh, didn't he find a nice one at all? He's got a knack for reanimating the dead. Oh, there's something of yours I'd like to reanimate, if you catch my drift. A heart like this is just what we need. Oi! Hands off the aortas! You can handle my aorta any time, baby! Oh, cheeky devil! Um, so... Just spied that big old baboon heart there, and I seem to be in rather dire need of one. Say no more, love. Once I'm done with the transplant, you can have the old one. Think it'll fit? Seems rather large. Oh, I like some big, if you get my meaning. I'm afraid I don't. But yes, Argyle, it should suffice. I'll be done quicker if you give me a hand. I'll give you more than a hand. Wink. <laughs> I'm talking about sex. Ha! You, uh mentioned. So how can we help? I can think of a few ways you could help. Oh. Perhaps we could hand you a surgical tool. I'm sure you have some big tools around here somewhere. I, uh, have a, um, I have a tool you could handle. Jesus! That's disgusting! What the fuck, Bernie? Oh, I need a shower. I'm so sorry. It's okay, it's okay. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean... Just don't talk to me. If you want to help, Mr. Coatrack, pass me that bottle over there. Sure thing. Seems to be a bottle of laudanum. An anaesthetic for the ape, no doubt. Sure, help yourself. Don't mind me. I see something I'd like to help myself to. Oh, go on, you. No, 
know the full one. Alas, in my weakened state, the large bottle is too much for me. Get this bottle for me. Happy to burn! Heads up! Before I realize what's happening, the bottle is flying through the air towards me. What was that? Nothing! Nothing. What did you do that for? I, uh, it's okay. I can replace it. Yes, I'll simply synthesize some anesthetic. Shouldn't be hard. I have books on the subject. Quite the assemblage. That looks like... Why, it's a bunch of Johnson Thomases! Oh, spot my little collection, have you? Can never have too much willy about, I always say. I can't reach, and I'm not sure I'm inclined to try. Say, Bernie, I was wondering... Yes? Ah, uh, never mind, it's nothing. Interesting. A book here details the use of cure by those barbaric natives of darkest South America. Whoa, now! Coming off a little xenophobic there, Doc! No, no, I just meant they're not civilized. I, I mean, well, not as advanced like us. I'm bigot! We got a bigot here! Jesus, Burn! You need to work on yourself! If we can find a plant in the Strychnus family, I'll be able to extract the cure air and synthesize a replacement anesthetic. So... A plant. We're looking for a plant. Just say that! Seems to be a Theron plant of the Strychnos family. I'll take a specimen. That weasel Beaufort Marbury's done all he can to undermine my work. Marbury? Marbury? Where do I know that name? You should wait out here. I wish not for him to see you in your imperfect state. Right you are. Bernhardt, what do you want? I, uh... Could be just what we need. Marbury? Professor Marbury? Ah, yes. Professor. And soon to be head dean. I'm sure you'll be so thrilled to know. They're giving you the promotion. Now what is it, Bernhardt, you worthless excuse for a physician? I... um... For God's sake, spit it out! Well, I... Well, uh... God, you're idiotic. Stop drooling on my floor and get your slack-jawed face out of my office! I didn't give you permission to enter. Uh, Professor, about that old bit of arm on your desk. Old bit of arm? Old bit of arm? This, the mummified forearm of Aminotep II, seventh pharaoh of the 18th dynasty? This, the sole remaining artifact of that cursed expedition? This, the priceless artifact that's recovery took the minds and lives of several of my most esteemed colleagues? Uh, could I borrow it? Get out! I duck back as the professor grabs a paperweight from his desk and hurls it toward me. It lodges in the doorway, inches from my head, and I retrieve it before making my retreat. How'd it go? Ugh, I despise the man. He does, however, possess a mummified forearm. Left or right? Which are you missing? Seems to depend on which direction I'm facing. Curious. Well, it should be workable, if we can get our hands on it. Oh, uh, no offense. That hurt, Bernie! <laughs> the 
this won't take a moment. The anesthetic agent is complete. I just require an adequate receptacle. Yes, this bottle is identical to the one we broke, and the fluid looks similar to the original, with the appropriate tranquilizing properties. Hold it for me, would you? Carefully. Okay, okay. Have that anesthetic for you. Anesthetic? Oh yeah, here you are. Oh right, took you long enough. Now, where's my glass? Ah, here we go. The doctor extends an elegant martini glass, and I watch with horror as my creature pours a rough slug of liquid. Wait. What are you doing? Oh, Victor, don't tell me you're a teetotaler like that short Marbury. He's the reason I had to hide my gin in with the laudanum in the first place. But... Oh, go on. It's past noon. Can't work sober, can I? Done talking. She downs the glass with a violent snap of her neck. Ah, lovely stuff. Ha! Good for you. I like a lady who knows how to drink. Ah... Maybe I should... Uh-uh! No taking advantage, old boy! What? I wasn't! Sure you weren't! Sure! Dr. Molesto here's turned over a new leaf! I think I preferred Bernie. Got it. Hold still. This won't take a second. There. Oh, feels all thumpy. It's difficult to tear my eyes from the open chest. Bernhardt! What in God's name is this thing? Oh, it smells terrible. I, uh, this is, uh, uh this is, uh, you're a disgrace, Bernhardt. A disgrace to your profession, and a disgrace to the good name of this institution. I'll see you thrown out for this, this crime against nature. But... Hey, I know you. Oh, it speaks, my God. What an abomination. Yeah, this is the one. Him who did it. Murderer! Heavens, it's quite mad. What the hell is he on about, Bernhardt? You're the one forced me out the window. The professor peers at the monster. Argyle Coatrack? The very same, you devil. This is the blighter that sent me to an early grave. I never... you jumped out a window. Well, who wouldn't with a gun to their noggin? You're in bed with my wife. Take it up with her. None of my business. Never stick your nose in disputes of a marital nature, Bernie. It never ends well. You were sleeping with her. Well, can't blame me for that, can you? She has this darling little mole, you know, Bernie, just above her right buttock. You're finished, Bernhardt. You and this crime against nature, finished. Furious, Marbury storms into his office and slams the door. What a colossal ass! Let's sneak into his office and do a big shit right on his desk. <laughs> we have more pressing concerns for now. He seems somewhat put out. I don't think we should push our luck while he's still in there. I can't go if someone's watching anyway. I see something troubles you. Not here, Bernie. There's a lady present. Oh, I never. 
I see something troubles you. Oh, jeez. This is embarrassing. Please, I am your creator. You may tell me anything. It's just, well, you've done a cracker job on this body of mine. Only... Go on. It's a tad small in the downstairs area, if, if you get my drift. I see. I just feel a little insecure. Say no more. We must rectify this little problem forthwith. My creation must be perfect, ere the world witnesses of my achievement. A prodigious, towering paradigm of man. Give me a little oomph in the thrust department too. They're well out of reach, but perhaps I could fashion something to pull one down. Using the hooked spearhead, I managed to lever off the lid. Aha! The gut wrench I ordered. What's that do then? It's designed for the efficient wrenching of guts. Sounds rather specific. You never know when a length of human intestine could be useful. Hmm. Do you mind if I take this baby for a spin? <laughs> Not at all, Bernie. Get in there. I peel back rotting skin and work the device into the black intestine of my creation. Oh, that tickles. The savage utensil works faultlessly, and I extract a section of gut. Hope you left enough for digestion. It's my second favorite pastime. Using the length of gut, I managed to lasso a jar containing a sizable member. I'm not putting my dick in that. I'm not. Will this do to replace your current, um... I say, what's that big willy for? The replacement, uh, manhood you requested. Let me just remove... You get away from my cock! I did no such thing! But you said... This little peck is perfectly serviceable. I've already named her. Her? Of course! Agatha's her name, and I think you should apologize. Apologize? Is there an echo in here? It's not the size, it's how you use it. And you've hurt her feelings. I... I'm sorry, Agatha. Now, if you want to make yourself useful, it's these stumpy little legs you've given me that are the problem. I don't feel like a man with these feeble pigeon-sized kickers. Forgive me, I thought... You're a sick man, Bernie. I'd kick you if I wasn't so embarrassed by my twig-like shins. Oh, it's all right. You're still my pal. Let's forget the whole thing, eh? Do you have any recollection of the other side? Death? Well, I wasn't really paying attention. Wait, yes, there was a bright light. My whole life flashed before my eyes. What a riot that was. I remember Peter standing before the pearly gates. Extraordinary. Yeah, the gates is a nightclub downtown. Pete's a good friend of mine, always lets me in. Oh, I see. So let's review. We need to find you a new hand. Course. And, well, once that's sorted, we can perhaps procure you some platform shoes. Now you're talking! Then, at long last, I shall unveil you unto the world. My genius will finally be recognized. Victor Bernhardt, the man who conquered death. Then a quick pint and home for tea. Bernhardt! 
I'm off to see the head dean. Your days at this university are numbered. Been lovely knowing you. Now's our chance. I've got a big ol' undead footlong ready to drop. The office is empty, but... What is it? I've got a big zombie loaf all ready to go. Damnation. It's locked. I jam the crowbar into the door. However, I lack the strength to open it. The crowbar stuck fast in the door jam. I watch with admiration as the mass of muscle writhes, tendons stretch, and the door gives way with a splintering crack. That's got it! Right, let's grab the hand and get out of here. Hmm. What a lovely desk. Be a shame if someone... Get the hand first. You can shit on as much furniture as you want once you're fully restored. Deal! Fits like a glove. Yes, it's perfect. And now that your full power is restored, we can... Wait a second. What's going on? Something's wrong with this thing! <laughs> Blundering imbeciles! You have no idea what you're messing with! What's going on here? I tried to warn you about the curse, idiot. Aminatep II does not like to be disturbed. No, I can't control the ruddy thing! What's it trying to do? <laughs> with horror, I watch the mummified hand rise inexorably toward the cranium of my companion. I see fear in his yellowed eyes as he struggles to overpower the mutinous claw. But it is too strong. It reaches into his open skull, plucks out the brain, and my wonderful creation falls dead to the floor. Pathetic. Marbury, you fiend! Shut up, you blathering cretin! I'll be back shortly with the Dean. When he sees what you've done, you're through. Locked. I'll just dust this off. Good as new. There you go, old friend. It's full of water. I'm taking a sandwich, Marbury. Try and stop me. I watch with envy as tiny birds flit up and down from the window. It's too high to climb down. The bread soaked up the tranquilizing agent. This should serve as a lure. I watch with envy as time. Such a fragile home for something so treasured, so hideous as a soul. Alas, my innocent friend, your sacrifice is required. The bird's tiny heart flutters faintly against my grip, then the slightest crunch as its spine fractures and its life force is expelled. This infernal vacuum doth hold the essence now. I'll flip the vacuum into reverse. Yes, yes, this should work. I bring the hose to the moor of the carcass and power up the vacuum. The life essence transfer will complete. I switch off the machine. Argyle, 
My poor friend. Your synapses are dead. Demon Electricus vanished. This will not stand. I pour some water over the corpse of my friend. The arm seems a little loose. That's just a loss of waiting to happen. I'd best not get too close. I'm going to tip your precious water all over the floor, Marbury. You'll rue the day you ever crossed Dr. Victor Bernhardt. Okay, that should be it. Yes, yes, it's working. It's working! <laughs> I'm back! Can't keep our guy coat rack down! Is that right? Marbury! Looks like I'll have to take things into my own hands. In a flash, I see the fiendish Marbury pull a revolver. I dive out of the way as he brings it up and levels it squarely at the exposed brain of my friend. Any last words, monster? Yeah, say goodbye to your wife for me. No, stop. Oh, what is it now, Bernhardt? Uh, don't eat. You'll never get away with this, Marbury. Dare you'll never get away with it, Marbury. You're pathetic. Don't even. Don't eat. Enough of this, Argyle Coatrack. Goodbye. Nice of him to lend me a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Say, Bernie, those are some fancy legs he's got. Fabulous. <laughs> Aren't they, though?